All right, a little bit about uh, Flowplay. Um, we make virtual worlds and games. Uh, we have a teen-focused MMO called Our World that's played by about 35 million people. Uh, we also have a really fun social casino called Vegas World. And we also white-label the uh, Vegas World technology uh, for third parties, uh, the best known of which is uh, the MSN Games Zone Casino on uh, MSN Games. So, uh, as the title and ab abstract of this talk indicate, we're here to discuss how we at Flowplay are moving to a new cross-platform game development technology, and how some of you in the audience may be able to as well. Um, before we get into the details, of how we're using Hacks and OpenFL throughout our development organization, I think it's important to look at the uh, motivation for making a move that's so disruptive. Um, and it is disruptive. It's not easy to move your entire team to a new development environment, uh, a new development language, new tools. Um, after all, developers are people too, and we fear change just as much, of any, uh, just as much as anybody, uh, maybe even more so when it comes to our tools. So we're going to discuss some ways in which Hacks and OpenFL help to minimize this, the disruption. Uh, but first, we're going to talk about why we made this change. Flowplay has been an ActionScript flash shop since 2007. We have a massive amount of code that's written in ActionScript. And we have an experienced team of developers that are familiar with the platform. Uh, we also have a large and loyal audience that still play our games on the web. Some of our players have moved to mobile, um, and we're seeing a lot of growth in that area. But the web is still the most significant portion of our business. And for all its problems, and these have been discussed uh, elsewhere extensively, Flash for us is still a pretty good option. So why switch? Well, uh, the shorter answer is we're forced to. Flash is dying, um, as you probably know. A few years back, Apple announced that they would never support Flash in their iOS browser. Steve Jobs famously hated Flash. His, re his stated reason was uh, for this opinion was its poor performance and security issues. Um, but many people also believed that Flash represented a threat to Apple's App Store strategy in that it provided a channel to deliver applications to mobile devices. In any case, Apple controls a platform, and Flash was not welcome. But the clever folks at Adobe weren't uh, so easily turned away. Uh, there was nothing that they could do about the mobile browser, uh, but after a couple of tries, they were able to figure out a way to allow developers to create native applications using Adobe Air. And Flash developers, including us, rejoiced because it meant uh, we had an opportunity to deliver uh, and leverage our significant uh, investments in code and deliver games on uh, native mobile devices, uh, native Apple devices. And we shipped versions of our world and Vegas world on the iPad using this mechanism. Uh, but recently, Flash has been attacked from another flank, desktop browsers. The rise of media capabilities uh, brought about by HTML5 has meant less need for the feature set provided by the Flash client. And that, combined with a number of high-profile security issues, uh, has led browser makers to announce an end-of-life plan for Flash and really all other plug-in-based technologies. Now, uh, it would hurt, but we could probably survive if we lost the players playing through Safari and Firefox, um, but not Chrome. We can't afford to lose Chrome. And they're all going away. Now, the headlines and the terminology we're using are pretty dramatic. Uh, we've been talking about Apple and Google killing Flash, but what does this look like in practice? Well, it's more of a slow torture. Uh, at first, players will just see a warning when trying to access uh, a page for the first time that contains Flash content. They can choose to accept it once or permanently. They can even go into their browser settings and allow Flash content to always run without being prompted. And you might uh, see this and think, that doesn't look so bad. Well, you'd be wrong. Uh, this is the same treatment that browsers used to give to Java applets. 
Does anybody remember Java applets? They're not very popular these days. And for our pers perspective players, especially those that tend to be older and less technically inclined, that little puzzle piece may as well be a biohazard sign. We don't yet know what the impact will be, uh, but we expect to see a significant uh, hit to our acquisition funnel as a result of these warnings. And this is really just a warning shot. A full-scale ban will come soon enough. So Flash may not be totally dead, but it's certainly on the cart. Now, for developers that are focused on console or mobile spaces, it, this isn't really a problem. As I mentioned earlier, we have a large web-based audience, and we need to be able to serve customers on mobile as well. We have a small team, and we'd like to maintain a single code base. We've also invested a ton in our current technology stack, almost a million lines of ActionScript 3 code. We have an experienced team of ActionScript developers and an asset pipeline that's built around Adobe tools. In other words, we've got a serious problem. Not, not actually this problem. But, uh, at least I don't want to talk about it right now or ever. Um, we've got a flash problem, and we needed help. So we looked around a bit, and we found Hacks in OpenFL. And Hacks is a programming language. You can think of it as a replacement for ActionScript. And OpenFL is a library, and you can think of it as a replacement for the Flash API. Hacks was first introduced in 2005, so it's been around a while. Um, and it's gone through numerous changes and improvements since then. Um, it acts as a source-to-source -source compiler. So um, you feed in hacks code, and you get out HTML5. Or I mean, for HTML5 target, you get out JavaScript. Uh, for the iOS or Android targets, you get out C++. That C++ is then compiled by the native tools to produce a, a native binary. And as I mentioned, uh, OpenFL is a library that provides a Flash-like API. And a number of companies, large and small, have developed games and multimedia applications using it. Uh, for instance, the UI for modern TiVo boxes is built using OpenFL. And both EA and Zynga have used it. And Zynga even recently contributed their Hacks Stage 3D implementation to the project. And when I say it has a Flash-like API, what I mean is that it, is that it has, the same, uh, it has a, the same class hierarchy and and class interfaces as Flash, and code written in ActionScript uh, can be ported to Hacks OpenFL with minimal changes. This is an example of a simple program written in Hacks using OpenFL. Um, it should feel very familiar to any Flash developers in the audience, um, but this pro program can be output to more than just a Swift, and doing it is as easy as typing OpenFL test and then the platform name. Running that command will compile and run the code on the target platform. So for instance, OpenFL test flash will build a Swift and run it in the local flash player. And OpenFL test HTML5 will build an HTML5 game and open it in and run it in your local browser. OpenFL test Mac or Windows will build a native desktop application and run it locally. And OpenFL test iOS or Android will build a native mobile device and install it on a uh, device that's attached to your dev machine via USB and run it there. And of course, there's some initial setup required to, to support each one of these platforms. But once it's set up, uh, building for them is easy. So at Flowplay, we've uh, worked on a number of projects with OpenFL and Hacks. So the first one was our Vegas World Slots product that we built from scratch using uh, Hacks and OpenFL. And we ported some of our existing AS3 libraries by hand, and we built some Hacks extensions that allow access to native SDKs for things like analytics and monetization. Um, and when we're developing, we target Swift for testing. Uh, so we do our, our testing and debugging um, locally against a flash target. Um, and this allows us to do very uh, fast iteration, and we can debug within our IDE. Um, but commercially, we've produced an HTML5 version that we wrap uh, in a Windows Universal wrapper for distribution in the Windows App Store. And we've produced uh, iOS and Android native builds that are in the uh, iTunes Store and Google Play Store and Kindle Store. 
And we recently embarked on porting our, uh, the rest of our product line to Hacks and OpenFL. And as I mentioned earlier, this comprises approximately a, a million lines of ActionScript code. And rather than porting this by hand, we're using a tool called AS3 to HX uh, that's also provided by the Hacks community. And um, this tool, while not perfect, um, because it requires some manual uh, uh, adaptation and cleanup uh, for each translation unit um, it's used on, is still saving us a ton of time. So some things we've learned in this process. Uh, it works. It sounds funny. Um, we, of course, hoped that it would work when we embarked on our first project, but the devil's in the details with these things. And you never know until you, uh, if it's going to work until you get, really get things up and running. And uh, as someone who has done a lot of cross-platform development and porting, it's so satisfying to uh, be able to type a command and see the game running on one device, and without changing a single line of code, type another command and see it running somewhere entirely different. And performance is good. The mobile code is native code, um, and so we get native performance benefits. And OpenFL uses har hardware acceleration where it's available. Uh, web, or, uh, GL on iOS and Android and WebGL on HTML5 targets, so we get optimal frame rates. And porting from ActionScript, as I mentioned earlier, is straightforward. The ha syntax of hacks is very similar to ActionScript. Um, and it's a, uh, the, the language itself supports stronger typing than ActionScript does, so uh, especially in areas like uh, passing, function uh, passing functions as arguments, for instance. And so we've taken advantage of that to improve some of our existing code. OpenFL supports parsing and reading Swifts um, and some Swift animation features. Um, however, we chose to go a different route with our asset pipeline, and we've, moved, we've moved, at this point moved most of our assets to texture atlases and implemented uh, most of our animations using Dragon Bones uh, animation, skeletal animation system. Um, and Hacks and OpenFL work great with these technologies as well. Um, and there's a small but responsive community behind Hacks and OpenFL, and they've been really quick to answer questions and fix bugs and implement features for us. But there are a few gotchas, uh, like any cross-platform technology. Um, one thing is native extensions are still a pain. Uh, especially for developers coming from ActionScript, creating a native extension, for, for instance, wrapping a, a vendor SDK for iOS and Android for something like um, analytics, requires knowledge of Hacks, uh, Java, JNI, Objective-C, Hacks CFFI, which is sort of a JNI equivalent for C, um, not to mention various build scripts and config files. And we've gotten pretty good at this now, but um, it was difficult at first. Also, source level debugging on devices is, is difficult. Um, as I mentioned, we do a lot of debugging on the Swift target, and we can do source level debugging in our IDE there. Um, you can debug the C++ output from the Hacks compiler. It maps nearly one-to-one -one with Hacks files and classes, but the code is machine generated, um, and it can be difficult to mentally parse. There's supposedly support for a source level debugging in hacks for native C++ targets, uh, but we've never gotten it to work. Um, and so um, we do most of our debugging in the Swift environment, and then um, if we have a, a platform-specific iOS problem, we debug that natively in Xcode. Uh, finally, compared with ActionScript 3, the amount of documentation and example code available is sparse. It's growing, and as I said, the community is responsive, but it'll be some time before the documentation is at the level of robustness that Adobe and others have provided for ActionScript. But we're all in with this path at Flowplay. Um, recently, Joshua Granick, the founder and managing director of OpenFL, joined our team as scientist in residence, and he'll be working full time on the project to advance the platform and support the community. And we're going to be hosting uh, local OpenFL meetups um, at our home base in Seattle and supporting others around the, uh, the world that want to host their own meetups in their cities. And Joshua and I have been traveling uh, to shows like this one uh, to talk about the platform uh, and what we've done with it and where it's headed. We've also been contrib contributing code to the community. Uh, most recently, we contributed a, a new up-to-date port of the Dragon Bones animation package to Hacks. And um, in the near future, we'll be contributing a number of native extensions that we've built 
uh, for SDKs for monetization and analytics features. Here's some links to resources that you can use to learn more about both Hacks and OpenFL. And uh, if we have time, we can open it up for questions. Thanks. Uh, as a former Flash developer, uh, the elephant in the room for me is uh, why not Unity? I mean, what do you offer that is uh, yeah. beneficial? Yeah. Well, I think a couple of things. As I mentioned, uh, for us, we have a big web-based business. Um, we need a, a, a solution that, that um, allows us to continue to service our, our players on the web, uh, but also allows us to deliver mobile. And Unity doesn't really do that for us. Um, it's also open source. Actually, um, I, I, I must uh, say from personal experience, it is hard, but Unity is making uh, big steps in that direction. I mean, we just delivered a quite big game in WebGL. So, uh, well, and so in our experience, it didn't really work. And we, we gave it a shot, and it didn't work. So um, th this is the, uh, the direction that worked. and, and um, I think the other reason is, as I mentioned, we've we've got a um, we've got a, a million lines of ActionScript three code. We've got a development team that's familiar with that environment. Um, uh, it's a big impedance mismatch between that and Unity. And for this, uh, moving to Hacks OpenFL, the team could do it um, without skipping a beat. I'm an uh, Adobe Air developer, and I wonder what what's my what will be my reasons, in your opinion, for me to convert my projects to your plat to this platform. Yeah, well, I can't say how uh, Adobe Air, as I mentioned, we've we've delivered a number Adobe of projects Air for mobile. All yeah, mobile. as I mentioned, we've delivered a, a number of projects uh, to mobile using Adobe Air, um, and um, it was a fine solution for us as it went. Uh, for us, we needed to be able to deliver across uh, web and mobile. Um, Flash is definitely going away on web. We don't know how much longer Flash is going to be supported or, that, or Adobe's going to support Air on mobile. Um, we want to be in control of our own destiny and be able to deliver to as many platforms as possible. Um, with an open source solution like Unity or like um, uh, OpenFL, um, we know it's always uh, it's being supported by the community and always being moved to new platforms. But you know you need to make your own decision about that. If 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 Air is working for you and it supports the targets uh, that you need to support, then I would stick with it. How much does it cost to use Hacks? <laughs> Hacks is free and open source, so we don't. It, it doesn't cost us. Uh, uh, there, there's no licensing fee. Uh, it's available like any other piece of open source software. And of course, we contribute. Back, back to the community and try and build the platform up. But it's not our platform. It's just the platform that we chose to use. Do you have an estimation on how many games were ported or developed uh, to date with Hex and OpenFL? I don't know. Um, on OpenFL.org, there's a gallery uh, that has hundreds of games listed. Um, and I mentioned, as I mentioned, Hex has been around um, over 10 years. So many, many games have been written in Hex. Um, OpenFL is slightly newer, uh, so fewer in OpenFL. But um, if you're interested, check out the gallery on, um, on OpenFL.org. Some very famous games, including uh, Papers, Please, which won an Indie Award at GDC a few years ago, were written in OpenFL. Madden, M Madden did their, their, their UI for, uh, or EA did their, their UI for the latest version of Madden using OpenFL. Okay, that's a wrap. Let's thanks, uh, thank you. Thank Greg. Thank you.